for joining us. We're talking to photographer Justin Coleman, or J.G. Coleman, because as you point out, there's a lot of Coleman's. I was strolling through, scrolling through Twitter, and I, I found you, and you're a landscape photographer, and I love the things that you're, you are doing. So how did you become a landscape photographer of the Northeast? Uh, well, uh, really, my story kind of began um, with art in general. Uh -huh. um, uh, when I was a child, I was uh, very interested in drawing, very interested in painting. Uh, I didn't really pick up a camera until a lot later in life, really, until... You're not that old, Justin. Right, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> true, that's true. Uh, but I started with art so early that, for me, really, photography was kind of a, a later adaptation of that. And um, it kind of began when I uh, went on a uh, trip to Costa Rica, and I noticed that, uh, although I was amazed with the landscape there, it was so exotic to me, the people that lived there seemed like they were sort of jaded to it. It was something they lived with every day. Um, it was something that maybe it became easy for them to not notice. Uh -huh. And uh, kind of with that realization in mind, uh, I wanted to kind of rediscover where I lived and rediscover all the natural beauty of my own home um, in a way that maybe I had been missing. So you shoot all of New England? Uh, primarily Connecticut. I would say 90 or 95 percent uh, of my shooting is Connecticut, um, but also uh, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, uh, Eastern New York. And what are you trying to convey with your photographs? Uh, well, there's a certain component of it that's literal. So I do want to show the beauty of the landscape itself and, and be able to uh, bring people along with me wherever I go because I'm going from one corner of the state to the next and seeing some really incredible things in the state that I think a lot of people maybe don't know about. Uh, but there's another component of it, uh, which is really uh, about human experience. So within the landscape, we can find truly the, the full range of human emotion from um, joy that you might find in a, in a sunrise to sort of a, a mournful sort of feeling that you would get with an overcast day, uh, you know, a cold overcast day on the river. Um, and so, in, in a lot of ways, we can find ourselves in the landscape. And so, uh, landscape photography can be just as much about human experience as it is about the landscape itself. And I think people forget sometimes how beautiful Connecticut is. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, it's very easy to miss out on the vast majority of what there is to see here if you're always taking the highway from point A to point B. Um, and a big strategy I've had with trying to find new and beautiful places here has been to uh, select a destination and tell my GPS to take me there without highways. And uh, it's, it's amazing the sort of things you'll find, the sort of places you'll find uh, that no one seems to know about. Um, and so you know, it's, it's really about getting off the beaten path sometimes. All right, let's get off the beaten path on the highway and start looking at some of your photographs. Sure. Where is this? Obviously, autumn. Uh, yeah, so this, uh, this is autumn. This is actually uh, in Bridgewater and New Milford. I think there's a little bit of both of those towns in the scene. Um, but this is actually something people can see right from the road. Uh, this is an, uh, like a roadside pull-off and overlook. And on this particular morning, uh, the scene just came together perfectly because there was uh, a nice thick mist hanging in the hills there. So you got great separation between uh, you know, the nearest hill and then you know, slowly kind of fading off into uh, duller colors in the background. Where do you, uh, do you crouch down sometimes to get exactly what you're looking for? I mean, do you, do you create it in the lens? Uh, well, it's absolutely, perspective is definitely critical. It's, it's, there's definitely, uh, you have to make sure that a scene will flow. A composition has to have a certain flow to it. You don't want too many elements crowding each other. Um, and sometimes the difference between really getting the shot and really conveying the mood just right or, or, or botching it can just be whether or not you move three feet to the left, three feet to the right. Are there a lot of landscape photographers or are you among a few? I mean, there are a lot of people that you run into as we look at another photograph here. Um, well, it's, it's a very small community uh -huh, of sincere uh -huh. landscape photographers in Connecticut. Uh, but. You know, there, there is definitely a community of them, and they, they all produce very high-quality work. So I follow them all, and a lot of them follow me. You know, we're always uh, seeing you know, what each other are producing and seeing where each other are and uh, gaining inspiration from each other. Where is this, sunrise or sunset? So this is a sunrise. Uh, this is actually at Greenwich Point. Um, so this, uh, this was one of those times, sometimes when you, when you go to do a photo shoot uh, at the ocean, it's, it's really contingent on whether or not the right clouds 
come up. Because if you have kind of just a, a big barren sky, it's not very interesting. So in that particular case, the clouds held up uh, and there was some very beautiful colors that came over. And that worked How out do you well. know when you have the shot? Uh, sometimes you know and sometimes you don't. I mean, do you click a um, thousand of, of that shot and hopefully one of them comes together like you want it to? It, it can really vary. Uh, a lot of times you're working with changing light, so you, you only get a couple opportunities to get it right. Um, and sometimes you, you, uh, you know, I will know for certain that I got it and I'll, and I'll kind of see the, the preview uh, of the photograph and I, and I know that I've gotten it uh, in a way that it really resonates with the creative impulse that, that, drew, that, that drove me to take that shot to begin with. What's your favorite hour? to shoot. Is there one? Uh, I do the vast majority of my shooting in the morning. Um, just because I feel like you get a lot of ethereal conditions that, that a lot of times you don't get uh, at sunset. So for, for me, the, the morning is, is definitely when I do the vast majority of my shooting. So what time are you getting up? Like 3 o'clock in the morning to, to shoot your photographs? Uh, four? It, at least, at least 4.30. So 4.30, uh, get ready. Try to be out of the house by 4.45, 5 o'clock and on the road to, to wherever I'm headed. And you told me you've got four-year-old twins, too, so you're creeping out of the houses to not yes, wake them up, yes, right? Yes, yes, they sleep a little more soundly <laughs> now. It, it used to be a very tricky process oh, yes, getting out without waking them up. Uh, where is this covered bridge? So this is the uh, Comstock, uh, Comstock Covered Bridge in East Hampton. So that's uh, a bridge over the Salmon River. Um, and that's one of Connecticut's few sort of authentic 19th century covered bridges, though I do believe it was reconstructed recently. Um, but this was an, another great uh, autumn scene. Uh, in this particular case, I actually had to walk out into the river to be able to get the perspective as I had envisioned it. Uh, but it was well worth getting my feet wet. And how was that manipulated, if at all? What, what do you do when you um, get your pictures in? How do you treat them as a, as a photographer? Uh, well, you bring what's, what's called the digital raw files, which is sort of like a digital negative, mm -hmm. into um, software, usually uh, Adobe software like Lightroom or Photoshop, or there's other similar softwares that can be used. Um, and usually you're tweaking the color saturation, the contrast, um, maybe adding a little more clarity to it and then kind of balancing out the light in the scene. So sometimes you'll have parts of the scene that came out a little too bright and you can dial that back or scenes, you know, components that came out a little too dark and you can bring up the shadows. Now you sell your photographs, right? You have stock photos and whatnot. Uh, yes, uh, so both licensing and, and prints, yeah. Yep, and uh, is this, this is not your, your day job. Your day job no. is something else. No, yeah, so I, I do juggle this as sort of a, a part-time gig along with my full-time day job, yeah. Would you like it to be your full-time gig? Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, you know, I can't think of anything I'd, I'd like to do more than, than get out there and, and be in the field, um, you know, really pursue my creative impulses. And yeah, create. Absolutely. All right, um, is this just not manipulated and you got that wave coming over the rock? Yeah, there's really very little manipulation here. So this is a bluff point in Groton, which is a really beautiful place uh, I recommend Everyone go there if they're if they're willing to make. I think it's the one mile walk to get to this rocky oh, shoreline. Wow. So you really are off the beaten path. Uh, yeah, Bluff Point is is a really interesting state park in that uh, this particular beach is very much undeveloped. You have to make a sort of a mile walk and a path through the woods to get there. And I got there at dawn. And this is one of those cases where I took probably a hundred shots mm -hmm. trying to freeze the action on that wave just right. So that's one of those cases where there's there's a lot of shooting that goes on. Well, nicely done. <laughs> Very you. nicely done. Um, do you ever stray from landscapes? I mean, are you taking a bunch of pictures of your family all the time? Uh, f f I, I do, but I do those just with my, just my iPhone. Fun. That's yeah, yeah. So it's a little too much trouble to drag this out for uh, for the family photos. Usually, I want to be be there for the family. <laughs> so this is morning. Uh, yeah. So this uh, this is an interesting uh, photograph because this is one of those instances where it's always important to be open to different possibilities. This is not what I went to shoot. Uh, this is at uh, Lovers Leap State Park, where there's a very beautiful overlook of Lake Lilanona. What um, town is that? That's uh, in the Bridgewater, New Milford okay. area. Um, so I shot that in the morning and there's uh, too much fog, so I ended up leaving. And as I was walking back on the path, I saw the, the sun coming up through the woods there. And there was just this incredible glow coming through the trees. So there's just this beautiful separation of trees all the way uh, out into the distance. And you know, that was a shot. It ended up being my favorite shot of the day. And it was not at all something I expected to be shooting when I got so, up that morning. So that, as a journalist, you can, you can go to, to a story and think one thing's going to happen. 
But it, you get in trouble when you have preconceived ideas yes. because you, you have to really let it play out like it is, which is which is what you do. Absolutely. Do you have other friends that you're shooting with that, that do this? Or are you pretty much on your own with this? Most of the time I'm on my own. Okay. Uh, daisies. This, this could be Switzerland. Where is this? This is actually in Southbury. So this is the Bent of the River Audubon Sanctuary, um, sort of on the banks of the Pomperog River. Um, and they have, uh, because it is a bird sanctuary, they have uh, like a wildflower meadow, basically a, a wow. meadow that's kept open. Uh, and they, they have all these very beautiful wildflowers. And you can go there actually throughout different times of the year and there's different flowers that are blooming. And uh, this particular time, you know, this cluster of flowers just really struck me. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it just came together. Well, the sky it must have been during the daytime. Uh, that was that was early morning. It was early morning. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. All right. Now, this. Did you do anything to this picture to make it look like this, or was that the way the water looked? Uh, that that's well. Uh, that sort of effect is actually uh -huh. done through a very slow shutter speed. Okay. So it was actually, although it's exposed so that we can see it pretty well, this was actually a very dark scene. Uh, so this was just as the sun was beginning to come up. This is in a very deep gorge up in Salisbury on Watch O'Cast Nook Brook, which is, that's a mouthful, but. Uh, uh, so I was crouched down in front of those boulders there, and I, I want to say that was maybe a 10-second exposure. So that was literally opening up the shutter, letting it run for 10 seconds, and that's what kind of gives the water that dreamy look. What's the biggest treasure place you have found that probably a lot of folks don't know about or have any idea about that you would go back to and take a lot of shots? Hmm. Do you have that place that's yet? That's a good question. Um, I don't know if uh, there's so much individual places. There's definitely towns that I find myself going to again and again and again like. and always finding uh, new things to shoot. Um, I love going to Cornwall. Uh, it's just an ex extremely scenic town. Um, Harwinton, I go to very often as well. Those two towns, it just seems that every time I go there, I'm able to go some different way and I find something new that's uh, just well worth shooting. So when you're driving to get to these towns, you, you might just drive down a road and go, this could be interesting. There could be a farm over here or there could be a brook over here. Is that what you do? Absolutely. I, I, I sort of intentionally get myself lost and, and I, I just see what that. I can find. <laughs> That's great. Other photographs that we, that we have. All right. You don't plan this. No, no. This, this was once, this is another one of those cases where this was not at all what I expected to shoot. Uh, this was actually the same morning that I was going to shoot the waterfall that we just looked at pretty recently. So I, I, on the way to that waterfall, um, I was driving by a pasture in Canaan and I looked up and I saw a group of deer who were perched sort of just on the, just on the ridge. Um, and I noticed that the sun was slowly coming up. It was starting to bring some color into the clouds there. And so I stopped my truck right in the side of the road, shut it off, propped up my camera right in the window and I just kind of waited to see what they would do. And uh, eventually they started to take off. I, they must have heard me. And, uh, you know, just at the right moment, I was able to capture that frame of, of the, the last deer running off of that uh, meadow. At some point, you, you must try, or I'm imagining that you hyperventilate, thinking, I got to get parked, I, I got to see what's happening, or, or you just miss it, and you're like, oh, that was a missed opportunity. Yeah. Do you well, feel that way? I've, I've missed plenty of shots over the course of doing this, so I'm, f I'm familiar with that feeling. It definitely, uh, it definitely hurts to miss the shot. Sometimes that happens, but uh, staying level head is, is really <laughs> is the best way yes. to, to try to improve your chances. Staying in the moment. <laughs> uh, other photographs that we have. Uh, another waterfall. You love waterfalls, right? Yes. Waterfalls have been sort of a, a recurring element in my photography, and, and I even branched them off, so I made an entire separate website, ConnecticutWaterfalls.com, which is really just my waterfall photography. Uh, but I've just always found them fascinating. Um, I'm not entirely sure even that I could say why, uh, but they're just places that I'm really drawn to, places that I think are, are particularly expressive of, of natural beauty. As a little kid, were you around nature a lot? Oh, all the time, all yeah. the time. My brother and I were always out in the woods, always, uh, always exploring, finding uh -huh. critters. <laughs> That's just something guys do. Now, this is a beautiful farm. Uh, yeah, another one of those cases of something I did not intend to uh, shoot. I was coming back from a shoot, and I was driving through Ellington, and I noticed the light on this barn was just perfect, so I decided to stop. And uh, this, this photo actually has people, which just <laughs> don't make it into my photography too often, but it came together just right in this scene that they went on break while I was there 
shooting this particular barn. And it and they, shows you how big the barn is. Yeah, it gives a sense of scale, and they just file through at just the right distance from each other. And you know, you, I couldn't have orchestrated it that way if I wanted to. Right, and you didn't have to get any any signatures because you can't tell who they are. Right, right. <laughs> lighthouses, love lighthouses. This was actually where I got married. This is Lighthouse oh, Point in New Haven. Sure. Uh, so it's a, definitely a special place to me. Um, you were crouching down there to get those reeds or no? Um, you know, I, I don't recall exactly. Um, this shot sort of just really came to me at the spur of the moment of keeping these reeds uh, blurred out and having the lighthouse nice and sharp. Um, but this was a challenging one because these reeds are always jostling, they're always swaying. So this is another one of those cases where I had to take a lot of shots to get this one right. Where are you headed next, do you know, to shoot? Now, it's, we're, we're looking at winter time now. Yeah, so I call this stick season. So season, when we okay. don't really have any, any lingering snow uh, and there's really no leaves and this is a great time, I think, to head to the beaches um, because a sunrise looks warm whether it's, whether it's cold outside or not and uh, really you get the whole beach to yourself. So this is usually the time when I'm going to the coastline, every opportunity I have. So now that it's December, we should look for J.G. Coleman on a beach. Absolutely. Thank you so much for bringing your perspective to us about a gorgeous Connecticut that most of us never see, but we do now with your lens. Thank you. Thank you. Spend all night kissing and the bottles right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution. I find the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor. Things keep locked in the grocery store of my mind. Just the same time, I skip right ahead to the last ride.